let's talk about some common storage concepts before we jump into the performance because I think it's important to note um, some things that affect all storage. So most storage can be as fast as the underlying hardware storage medium allows. So if we're talking about hard disk drives or uh, SSDs or NVMe, uh, you know, that's all going to uh, affect the performance of that storage medium because it can only go as fast as the underlying storage actually allows for from a hardware perspective. So let's also note that performance can be increased by leveraging clusters of disks uh, where you combine multiple disks together to get the aggregate of all of their throughput. Uh, and that means that the read write speeds can be increased simply by adding more hardware. Uh, and of course, using some you know method to bundle all of those together to make it look like one large disk to the end user. Um, and also to note, if not directly attached to the system, which there may be some limitations there, but generally when they're directly attached, it's very quick link. To the, uh, to the application or to whatever's trying to access that disk. But if there's network traffic involved, then network link speeds are gonna be a consideration as well. So if you have a uh, storage array that can write at 10 gigabits per second, uh, or rather gigabytes per second, but you have a network link that's only one gigabit per second, uh, that doesn't match up and you will not be able to realize your full throughput. So next let's talk about performance and usability. So performance uh, for the different storage types is all relative and relies heavily on a few factors, that, some of which we just covered. So there's the target disk speed, there's a the hardware specs, uh, network speed, uh, protocol overhead and limitations of those protocols, uh, scalability and searchability of the medium. So first let's talk about the performance and usability of block storage. Uh, besides those common storage concepts and considerations that we took a look at earlier, uh, this storage medium typically requires a file system to be applied on top of it uh, as raw storage, which will then uh, take on those additional traits of that file system. So we're talking about things like NTFS, XFS, and ZFS. Next, let's talk about the performance and usability of file storage. So again, the common storage concepts apply here as well. Uh, this will also be affected by the chosen file storage system overhead. So if you're using NFS or SMB or other file storage protocols, those are all going to have additional overhead and there's going to be some losses and some additional management that you have to consider when using those protocols. Uh, this will also suffer in search speeds when searching large amounts of data, uh, particularly unstructured data, because there is no metadata attached to these files or very limited metadata attached to these files rather. And therefore that makes it uh, once you get to a certain amount of data, it takes a long time to search through this and make it really usable for you. So next, let's talk about the performance and usability of object storage. Again, the common storage concepts apply here. Uh, additionally, on object storage, it leverages metadata to enable scaling and searchability to very large unstructured data sets. So that means that uh, now you can tag your data in a specific way and make it very searchable no matter how much data you have. The REST API access is extremely low overhead, allowing for near line speed access to the data, which means that you're not having a lot of overhead from the protocol itself, but rather uh, you are able to get whatever speed you are connected to that network at, almost uh, the throughput to that MinIO cluster or other S3 cluster. And it's largely not bound by CPU and RAM, but rather uh, network capabilities. So a lot of these other protocols, as you start to scale out the amount of storage, you also have to add CPU and uh, memory. But object storage is typically not that way and can really reduce the overall hardware that you need to actually be able to run at very high disk speeds and store lots of data. 